الكاف نوايا الخلوة نوايا العزلة نوايا الرياضة نوايا السلوك لله تعالى العظيم في هذا المجد أطيع الله وأطيع الرسول وأول الأمر منكم We continue from the previous session that every every moment Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is sending his favors on us in every moment Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sending his mercy on us why and how we can know that how we can know that Allah is honoring us with his favors. Allah honoring us with continuous favors. He just came. Huh? It's a favor. Waiting for him to begin. Just we begin. He didn't miss anything. So how we know that these favors are coming on us is that Allah did not stop us from breathing. When someone stopped breathing, what does that mean? He's dead. That's a big honor and a big favor that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sending that air that we are able to inhale and exhale. If that stop, <coughs> then we are finished. What stops first, the inhale or the exhale? Exhale. When it goes out, we stop. It doesn't come in. So it means the f the first uh, the first sign is when the breath will go out. The new one doesn't come in. It's finished. So. That is ni'ma from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on us that He is blessing us with it. So how much this very small air that goes in and then it's when it goes in you take the oxygen and you leave the rest. How the body knows this is the oxygen and the other is not oxygen. To, today, if they want to determine the air and to, uh, to check it, it's a big process in order to, to see what is where is the oxygen, where, where is the hydrogen, where is the different helium or different gases. SubhanAllah, Allah gave us an ability to know what is right and what is good, what is good for us and what is not what is not good for us. If the body knows what is good for you, which is the oxygen is better than the others and the oxygen is being sent to the heart in order the heart to take it together with the blood all the way to the brain, all the way to the whole body. Do you think then that we don't know what is good and what is bad? Do you think then that we don't, Allah did not give us a balance to know what is good and what is evil? If we know, if our body knows what is, which gas is good for us, the, the oxygen or others, Allah does not give us also to know the evil from non-evil? So why then we follow evil? 
why then if we know and our mind will know don't stop them from falling under the trap of shaitan that's why as we said previously, you were not here, but as we said previously, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala likes his servant to be always asking, like a student asking from a teacher. He said, don't be a, don't make yourself a scholar, make yourself a student. Every scholar is a student to the scholar who is above him. In every field, in every field there are the scholars are students to the scholars who are above them. But the ego does not let you to do that. Ego is what makes us to fall into the problem of everything. Allah, Grand Sheikh, may Allah bless his soul, said that difficulties, afflictions, Allah changed them when we receive them as afflictions. They are difficulties that we are in. But in reality, they become ni'mah later. They become favor. And this is a, a big, big, uh, it has a big meaning that we have to understand how an affliction become a ni'mah how an affliction become a, a favor how a difficulty become a favor how a sickness become a favor ni'mah people when they have sickness what they say they, 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 they don't say ni'mah, it's favor. When they are sick, they say, they say it's a difficult, it's a problem. And they are seeking a way to get out of it. So any affliction that comes on a human being or difficulty that come on us, Grand Sheikh said it's a ni'mah. What he means? He means that because it's an affliction, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, since you got that affliction and came on you, Allah, because of that, He will clean you from your sins and change them from sins to rewards, to good tidings. Allah hasanat. Allah will change because of that affliction or that difficulty. If you were patient on it, Allah will change your sins. Everyone has sins. Allah changed these sins because of that difficulty to become hasanat. Means how many uh, of Ummatul Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who is, doesn't have difficulty? Do you have difficulties? Sometimes. Yeah. You have difficulties? Of course. I have difficulties? Yeah, of course. You have difficulties? Lot. Everyone. So, Allah cleans you with that. Look the... Uh, look... Uh, you know Khan? Ikramullah Khan, that one is the here there. You see his clothes, very nice, uh, ironed, very well ironed. See that? Huh? You say, mashallah, he's very handsome, very well ironed. His 
<laughs> All of us, we sit at the mirror every day, or we, uh, I don't know, uh, I don't shout, but might you shout. How many times you shout at your wife, why didn't I iron my clothes? Yeah? You shout also? He shouts also. He's more patient than you. Every, you also. You are French. So, they shout at each other, why you didn't do it, why you did not iron my clothes? Why you want them very well ironed, huh? In order that when you go out, people can respect you, right? And see you good looking. But before they were ironed, where they were, why we have to iron them? Because they were wrinkled. Why they were wrinkled? I'm asking them there in the, in the, on the internet. Why they were wrinkled? Tired? They were washed. They were washed. Why they were washed? Because they were dirty. Yes. Why they were dirty? Because we made them dirty. So when you make your ego yourself dirty, too much dirty, so you need an uh, you need you need a washing machine now. What is that washing machine? When you put, you become your clothes dirty, you put them in the, uh, in the washing machine, they become, the washing machine begin to squeeze them, is not? Squeeze them, squeeze them, squeeze them, and what, they become wrinkled. They come out from the washing machine, very wrinkled, then you iron them. We are dirty. To clean ourselves, we, they send us to a washing machine. Washing machine will, what you say? <laughs> squeeze us. Completely squeeze us. It depends on how much sin you are doing. Squeeze you, squeeze you, squeeze you, and then bring you out. But you came out wrinkled, but you are clean. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent on you affliction because you become so dirty you have to be clean because Allah loves Ummatul Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam why Allah loves them? us? because he made us from the nation of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Allah loves all his prophets but he loves Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the most that's why he chose him to be his seals of messengers. He created the creation for his sake. And Allah did not make us from nations of our other prophets. He made us from the nation of Sayyidina Muhammad, whom he loves. So it means Allah loves us more than anyone else. So to clean us, what he does? Send them affliction. They asked me a question on this uh, Noor TV. Say so why we are, why we have problems, Muslim community. We are dirty. We are dirty. They are washing us. We are always losing today because we are dirty and more dirty and more dirty and more dirty. Allah likes us to be clean because we, Prophet Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu is clean. He wants us to be with him. We cannot, he, cannot, he will not put us dirty with him. So he sent these afflictions on us. And then squeeze us, become wrinkled, then we come out to be ironed. What is the ironing after that? Is repentance. Ironing is when you repent, you are ironing back your wrinkled body. 
in order to become a better person, servant to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So affliction, masaib, is in reality a ni'mah. People, they don't look at it from that point of view. Awliyaullah, they look at it from that point of view. What Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, because what Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, he said, I am the most person between prophets and humans being that I've been abused the most. And he is the seal of messenger. No? Look, Sayyidina Musa, 40 years he was lost in the desert of Sinai. Allah said, I will, uh, I will give you victory over Fir'aun. He made him, Ya Allah, go be lost. He was lost. And Fir'aun, 40 years he was crushing the people of Israel, Bani Israel. And, say, and Sayyidina Musa was lost. Sayyidina Isa! They betrayed him. They were rushing after him to kill him. No? Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they tortured him. They abused him. All prophets. Sayyidina Ibrahim was thrown in fire. Sayyidina Nuh, they were coming and shouting at him, cursing him, throwing him with wood and stone when he was building the, 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 the ship. All of them, all prophets, they were under difficulties. Hey, are we better than them? Because they are under difficulties. We are not under difficulties. We are sinners. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive us by sending afflictions to clean us. So don't say when affliction comes that is a difficult that it is not a ni'mah. Say, Ya Rabbi. It's your, you send it, and you change meat to better, and you take it away from me. I am repenting. Allah is sending it to remind us to repent, in order that we would be in good position in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the day of judgment. And he said that when we when we f do a sin, we are doing it with when we when we when we fall into a mistake or a sin, a desire of the ego, we will do it with full energy. When a time of prayer comes, we do it with full of laziness. How many people don't pray? And Allah say you have to pray five prayers. When prayers comes, we are lazy, especially Fajr prayer. When Fajr prayer comes, we are sleeping. Young people, they say, Oh, Sheikh, I cannot wake up for fresher. What I have to do? What you have to do? Beat yourself up. He said, I cannot wake up for fresher. Okay, put an alarm clock. You put alarm clock? I mean, Okay, wake up for it. They tell your wife to wake you up. Because she, she prays, you don't pray. No, I'm joking. So, put an alarm clock. They said we put an alarm clock, but sometime when we turn this side or this side, we put it off. <laughs> As soon as it begins to ring, they what? They put it off. 
Is that? Why it is good to have a masjid in every street and every corner? Because you cannot put the masjid off. When the muazzin begin to, the one who call for azan begin to call in azan, you cannot stop him. His, uh, his sound is all the area. They wake up. Today shaitan is telling you don't put azan, don't live near a mosque. Bald. Even shaitan is, in Muslim countries, they used to, the five prayers they put on the microphones. Before they used to go on the minarets, they have four minarets or three minarets or two minarets, and they go up and they call azam for people to hear. Today they put uh, speakers. But for fajr prayer, they lower the speaker. They don't, they don't call azan for fajr prayer. They are not allowed anymore. They lower it. Because it is a, a, it's a law now in many Muslim countries. Why? Because they don't want to wake up for fajr. So they said, I put the alarm off. I said, okay. Don't put the alarm near the bed. Put it far from the bed and let it ring. <laughs> yeah? Yes, yes, yeah. It keep ringing and ringing and ringing and you are worried for the children not to wake up, especially young ones. So you have to wake up to stop it and you go all the way there. So then, finished. You are up. So, the problem is that, that's why he says, Grand Sheikh, may Allah bless his soul, and Manana Sheikh Nazim, may Allah give him long life, that when uh, prayer time comes, or something good to do, we are lazy. For ibadah, we are lazy. For doing something haram, we are so energetic. This is how, how our ego is tricking us. And then what we happen? We are under difficulties. That's why we are asking Allah, Ya Rabbi, we have to remember that. That Ya Rabbi, we are sinful servant. Sinful human beings. We are asking you to help us to take, our, to take that bad desires within ourselves and you are the one that can take that for the sake of Sayyidina Muhammad for the sake of Allah, take away that bad characteristics that we have and fill us with more love to worshipness more love to ibadah more love to good works, Amen. good amal. Amen. Or else we are falling in the trap of shaitan. We have no, we don't, ha we don't have enough power. Power comes from you, Ya Allah. Nothing comes from us. He was addressing one of the biggest scholars in Islam, one very famous scholar in Islam, but he doesn't have beard. You know, there are scholars in Egypt and in some Arab countries. They are ulama. They are uh, like grand muftis on that level. They don't have a beard. He was addressing one of them. He said, if you, leave, if you leave your beard, if you get it to grow, Allah will open for you the level of sainthood. Because he's alim. He's ready. But his ego doesn't let him to grow his beard. 
because if he wants to take his turban if he wants to take his turban and his hat see this and his hair and he has no beard he has nice hair or long hair he easily can go to any disco no one knows him no? But when he has a long beard, he has a turban on his head, can he go to a disco? He cannot. So Islamic image, when you dress it, it saves you. That's why Prophet وسلم, said, العمائم تيجان العرب Turbans are the crowns of Arabs crowns of Muslims MashaAllah you have a lot in Afghanistan all of them they have turbans there. but make sure they don't have turbans and long hair I see many of them they have long hair turbans so when they take the turban it's easy <coughs> to go anywhere with long hair, it's a little bit beard, they don't know what is that. They don't know this is Arab, Alim. And those whom they don't have beard, and they don't have a turban, and they are, they say they are Muslim, what you did with the Sunnah of Prophet ﷺ, you killed it. Prophet said, "Man ahya sunnati inda fasadi ummati falahu ajru mi'ati shahid aw sab'in shahid." Whoever revived my sunnah, when the people are corrupted like today, when there is everywhere corruption, Allah will reward him like the reward of seventy martyrs or hundred martyrs. Sahaba and people they were dying for one martyr. Prophet is saying, in the days when there is corruption between my ummah, anyone revive my sunnah, Allah will reward him with 70 martyrs. Okay. Why we are not doing it? Look at this one. A French. MashaAllah, has a beard, has a hat. Look at this one, he's American. Convert, and this one convert has a beard, has a, a, a hat on his head. Look that one there. He looks Pakistani, but he's not. He shaved his beard. He's going to grow it now. I like him, that's why I, I pick on him. So, the, the appearance also is important, like a clock. If the clock is working from inside, the battery is working, but the needles are not working, what is the benefit? Don't see the time. If our appearances doesn't look like a, a Muslim appearance of, like prophets, and his Sahaba's appearances, it doesn't look like we are a Muslim. It doesn't, these needles, that we lost them from the clock, from the watch. We, put, we need to put back the needles, and these needles are the Islamic appearance. Islamic appearance, at least when we are praying. People are praying today without an Islamic appearance. It's okay as long as they, they know that and as long as they try their best to be a loyal servant to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What you can do, the time is very difficult these times. And it's very difficult to do what it is be, needed to be done. But we have to know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent these difficulties because we, we are away from our... Islamic behaviors, so when these difficulties comes, it reminds us and cleans us 
and bring us back with no sins in presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his prophet. So he said to that scholar, if you put a turban and leave, grow your beard, you reach sainthood. Means with your knowledge that you know about Islam and together with the spiritual support, you will kill the shaitan that is in you. Because when you become different from others, people looks at you looks at you that you feel you don't belong there and still you are trying to be there like someone is a turban, someone with a Muslim cloth, someone with a beard. He find himself strange in a corrupted community. But still he is doing it. He is wearing it, he is leaving his beard. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, these people support. We are asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us support. Amen. And he said, what is humbleness? Ma huwa tawadu'a? What is the difference between humbleness and selfishness? What is the difference between humbleness and arrogance? What is the difference between humbleness and pride? He said it's a huge difference. Humbleness coming, you've been, you've been grafted. How, how you graft, how you graft the tree the wild tree to become a, to give a fruit, to, to give a sweet fruit, how you graft it. Also, humbleness is when you are grafted from Prophet Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that he is the highest level of humbleness Allah gave to him. We means we you are inheriting from Prophet ﷺ. Selfishness, arrogance, and pride, and pride, you are inheriting from Satan, Iblis. Iblis, he is the most arrogant, the most selfish, the most proud, as Allah described him in Holy Quran, where he said, "I am better than Adam. You created me from and fire. You created him from clay." He is the most arrogant, Allah threw him out. Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu wa sallam, he is the most humble. How we know that? He was invited to Isra and Mi'raj. He was invited to Kaaba Kawsaini Awadna. Not one prophet was brought to that nearness except Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu wa sallam because he was humble. So humbleness takes you up very high. Arrogance, selfishness, take you low very much. We are asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to fill us with humbleness. Amen. And bring us more closer to the nearer, to be more nearer to Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And takes away from our hearts arrogance and pride and selfishness and to keep us away from Satan. Amen. By this way, we will be able to destroy the house of Satan that he built within ourselves, within our hearts, and we begin to find peacefulness and happiness and satisfaction that coming to our heart. Okay. And building up us back in order to be a better servant to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah forgive us. May Allah bless us. May Allah support us. Hurmat al Habib, Hurmat al Fatih. Thank you very much. May Allah bless you all. Tahir, and Kult in Nujabu Ta'am. كم نص؟ كثير. أنت شفت؟
Bring that uh, soup, uh, Han.